welcome to uh, our open house. And uh, obviously you've done some research if you're here and you know that our real estate program is within the School of Architecture, the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation uh, at Columbia University. It is a program, a full-time program that uh, standalone um, undertakes uh, three semesters and um, you, you start in June uh, and you complete your degree the following May. Uh, so it's a very efficient system, we believe, for uh, undertaking dedicated real estate studies. Uh, just so that you don't uh, get confused, at Columbia uh, University, there's also the business school uh, that does not offer a real estate specialization or a real estate concentration, uh, but they do offer a handful of real estate courses that you can do within an MBA. The difference with our degree is that we are totally dedicated to real estate. You, you learn all of the things you need to learn in business, uh, but they are applied directly to real estate um, and not to you know, other types of business activities. Uh, we think that this gives you a, a much deeper understanding of real estate if this is your chosen area. This also um, enables you to uh, form a community of amongst your classmates and with our alumni of people in the industry who are you know, dedicated, out there working on it, uh, essentially form a big professional and business network. So we really think that that's invaluable for you uh, as a, um, you know, as, as a, uh, an option to uh, become a real estate professional. Uh, people off, just before I get going, people ask about the, um, the combination or the connections between these two uh, entities providing real estate studies. Uh, there's no formal connection. Uh, there's no dual degree. Uh, what we do have is that we have a lot of business school students coming and taking courses in our program, elective courses, which we allow them to do. Also, if you find that there's something in the business school that's more generally about business and you'd like to do that, uh, you can, of course, uh, try, register uh, and try and do that degree. However, our program is very, very rigorous uh, and intense. And mostly you'll find that there's really not too much time to be taking in other things. Uh, so I'll just get started with uh, talking about our program. I'm gonna share screen here. This is it, I believe, there we go. Okay. All right, um, we are within a school of architecture, planning and preservation, a school of the built environment. And for this reason, we are not just treating real estate as a business, as a transactional activity, but we are interested in the assets in addition to all of the financing, all of the investment and all of the trading opportunities. So we look at the built environment much more holistically. Uh, we believe that you come uh, to our program to understand how you create and participate and invest and maintain and make money in this urban environment or in the environment uh, of, of the built form. Our objectives are uh, as follows. Obviously, you know, we want to be the best program and we're constantly working at doing that by uh, in changing our courses, moderate, you know, modifying our courses, but particularly we have a rigorous and interdisciplinary curriculum. This is fundamental to what we're about. It's a very, it is an intense degree. Uh, it is not, you know, easygoing. It's uh, you're there to learn in three brief semesters, um, but it's uh, you will get significant deep dives and will find yourself incredibly well, uh, very capable and, and well enough um, cognizant of all of the things in the industry once you get out and take jobs. 
We are interdisciplinary in that we do look at the various other aspects of the built environment through uh, the other programs in our school. Uh, that includes architecture, urban planning, uh, preservation, and so on. We definitely have a um, significant number of uh, more, more, num more courses in real estate than in an MBA. Plus we focus all our activities, our networking, our social events, our guest speakers, and so on, on real estate, uh, rather than a more diluted situation in an MBA. I myself did my MBA at Harvard Business School, so I do know the limitations of MBA programs, and I do know that you're able to get um, a much more uh, ex uh, extended uh, and extended in breadth and deeper dive in terms of knowledge and rigor uh, in our program. We have outstanding faculty drawn from industry. We have uh, full-time professors and we have adjuncts who come in, who are obviously working, uh, practicing at the, uh, at the call phase. And they provide you with not only knowledge, but also their uh, very uh, real experience in how real estate works. New York City, of course, is we're very lucky to be here. It's a cutting edge of, real, of the real estate industry. Whether you're looking at the aspects of uh, development, finance, investment, private equity, uh, debt structuring, or even prop tech, which is now becoming a very important part of real estate investment activities. Um, and we have a partner in New York City, uh, Metaprop, which is one of the leading uh, prop tech venture capitalists, uh, cap capital firms uh, actually in the world. We have a global outlook, even though we're based in New York City and it's a fabulous laboratory to understand a lot of things about real estate. We realize that um, at least 50% of our students come from uh, overseas and uh, we, uh, we encourage them to be able to understand all of real estate with respect to their own backgrounds and, and their home countries. Plus we, we like to introduce all of the class to many of the global issues. And of course, real estate, though you will hear it's local, local, local. Of course, today the money flows globally, the interest in invest investment flows globally, um, even with um, the use of technology, offices and businesses and so on function globally. We uh, are really keen that you uh, get some literacy on the, on the technology that's emerging in real estate, real estate uh, was a laggard in adopting uh, technology, but now it's um, definitely utilizing it for very important things such as environmental sustainability and so on. So uh, you will be involved in, um, in learning of those, um, those new initiative, of those initiatives. Diverse network of alumni and industry contacts. We have now approximately, well, at least more than 3000 alumni globally. Uh, you are able to get to know those alumni, some of them through uh, being adjunct teachers, uh, some of them being mentors, uh, others coming in as guest speakers, and others whom you meet just through our networking activities. Uh, we also have um, good contacts in industry. I worked for 15 years on Wall Street, and um, many of our professors also have been involved in um, you know, broad industry activities, and they are able to pull in uh, industry contacts, major players in the industry to come and speak to you and tell you about, uh, give you their perspective and tell you about the things that they've learned. Our, uh, our location is our strength. As I say, New York City is a wonderful laboratory uh, here. Lots of new things are being tried out. Uh, people are very competitive. Uh, things like finance are often at the very, uh, very pointy end of what's happening in the industry. Uh, development technology is advancing here and so on. Um, additionally, as I say, that being in the Graduate School of Architecture Planning and Preservation is a competitive advantage. We have professors um, on, we have our own full-time professors. We have Professor Asha. Um, Kate, are you there? And we have uh, Professor Adam Lubinsky, uh, who are both people with planning slash architecture backgrounds. 
and they uh, teach or they reach across into the urban planning uh, studies and program. So not only are you able to reach across and study, but we actually even have our faculty doing this connection. Uh, so you learn the environment uh, in a number of ways. Of course, finance, um, it's a tool, it's a central tool for real estate. And, uh, you know, we are absolutely adamant that you become um, incredibly capable in financial analysis. That doesn't just mean doing spreadsheets and models and so on. It means being critical and, uh, and truly understanding and interrogating the financial models and, and what you, uh, how you create those and how you utilize them in support of your arguments and your activities in real estate. Physical development, we do take much more seriously and, and involve you in the learning of that uh, much more than typical business school real estate programs. Business schools are about business. Uh, with, uh, within the physical environment, we really look at how our assets are active. What are our users? Who are our users? What do our users do? How do they use the space and so on? And what does that mean? And in a world that's dramatically changing in how we use our office space or workspace, what that means today, uh, also working from home or how we use homes um, and also through to the, you know, the whole invigoration of many types of building forms uh, that used to only be for hospitality, we're finding that the physical function and the, the actual understanding of the structure and how it works and how people use it and experience it is a key part to being innovative and creative and um, even you know, have insight into better investment opportunities than someone who just knows the numbers. Uh, so we see development as a creative and responsible act. We see real estate investing as a creative and responsible act. Today, if you're investing in real estate, you become a steward or a custodian of a building through its life cycle, through the holding period. You become responsible for its environmental performance. Um, you become responsible for the materials that are, are being used and, and may even need to be disposed of upon a building's demolition. So the whole pros, the whole notion of real estate now, no matter what role you play in it, is creative and is socially responsible. Uh, as I say, we have a connection with the business school. We also, you can uh, see courses in the School of International uh, and Public Affairs, the Policy School at Columbia. Also, we have a lot of connections with the computer science folks and the da Data Science Institute. Um, these are not, none of these are formal, but we have um, obviously good opportunities to mix with those people. Uh, our program is absolutely uh, committed to uh, the versatility of a real estate uh, professional. We don't know how real estate is going to be uh, done in five years time, 10 years time, 50 years time. We do know that the built environment's rapidly changing. We do know that capital structures are rapidly changing. Uh, people's attitude to, uh, to investing in real estate changes. So the important thing is to establish a very versatile professional that's able to take, uh, uh, take to undertake a number of roles depending upon the changes in the context. So we, we uh, make sure that you are, you are learning uh, to be prepared for traditional or non-traditional roles in real estate. Um, some of those non-traditional roles are you know, associated with community land trusts, uh, with property technology uh, and so on and things like that. We also, although we focus on giving you a, a very, very strong core um, education in real estate, very important that you now reach out to many other disciplines. Uh, essentially, you come, you learn to be a real estate professional, but then you add to it your particular interests in various other aspects. Um, you know, we have people who are interested in real estate and its relationship to mental health and so on. So you can reach out uh, to other disciplines and, and start to understand that intersection. Uh, you can work, uh, we, you know, uh, 
we involve both the private and public sector in your education, and therefore you have the option as when you graduate to join either sectors or even be prepared for changing, moving between sectors throughout your life. Uh, that's happened to me, it's happened to a number of our professors and, uh, and so on. It's good to be able to embrace that. Um, also, you know, to become entrepreneurs or go into a structured workplace. Um, some people start entrepreneurial activities uh, in their, during their program. Uh, they may have been doing entrepreneurial activities prior to their program and so on. Other people would like to go out and get some corporate experience, learn how some of the bigger institutions uh, undertake real estate. And, um, and so you, you're prepared for both. We have both local and global engagement. We utilize our alumni network globally, um, but we also obviously use our um, alum, local alumni and industry contacts. We're very focused on your career development. Uh, this is not that we get you a job or, you know, uh, you know uh, we're, not, we're not a search firm, but we understand that you're doing a professional degree and that your learning is very much to be a support for your career, not just when you first graduate, but throughout your career. So we work with you um, on, uh, you know, considering your skills when you come in, what you need to build, uh, how you are going to um, include all possibilities to set yourself up to be a full professional, upon uh, graduation and, um, and then various training. We'll have Rebecca Polameda uh, speak to you in a minute about how she takes, takes you through that process. Our curriculum, oh, community, well, I've lost a why there, but anyway, our curriculum is, you know, it's very hard to break it out and segment it uh, because real estate is really comprised of all these aspects that weave together. But, you know, we have the financial, we have the physical, we have the delivery activities, you know, how you actually uh, undertake a transaction legally, what sort of entities you have to have to structure it, and also how you manage the development process. Um, we are, do all of this, of course, within a, a, with a lens that's really, really dedicated to the environmental sustainability of what we're working with. That is the built environment. And as you know, it is currently one of the, um, you know, the biggest problems in terms of environmental sustainability, but also for you has tremendous opportunities. Communities, we believe the real estate is about uh, the provision of a, an, an asset uh, for an environment for communities. So working with the communities and understanding community needs is absolutely key to the way in which you look at all of these activities. And as I say, digital, the new use, the new use of technology is constantly growing. And so you will um, you know, be incorporating that into your studies. Um, while you undertake studies, uh, courses in these various activities, uh, the idea is that towards the end you build um, uh, synthesis, you're able to pull together all of these many aspects. A real estate person is like a conductor who has to be able to be across all of the instruments of an orchestra um, and understand how they're pulled together to create a proper composition in terms of a real estate deal, a real estate development, um, or whatever part of real estate you're going to be active in. Uh, so the synthesis is a very important thing that we have a view towards right from the outset, uh, and that is that really takes place in a, in a formal way in your final semester. So the semesters are just, uh, you know, briefly like this. We have an intensive summer semester where you come in and you, you start with the fundamental uh, building blocks of, of real estate, um, of, of basically real estate a professional capability. Uh, the, here, some of you will come with uh, experience and background in some of these areas, others will be in others. We really are keen at this point that you don't just come along and you know, say, oh, I already know that, but you come along and be part of a community that is learning and learning together and helping each other in getting up to an understanding of all of these aspects. 
Um, and so you're able to understand what all of your classmates are going to be about, what people in the industry typically know and how they think about things, because you're going to be doing projects with your classmates. So even if you were an architect beforehand, um, you know, you uh, or you've been studying architecture, you need to learn how your classmates who haven't been doing that understand architecture and so on. And similarly with finance. Uh, in semester, if you don't have too many electives there uh, in, in that semester, um, uh, and, oh, sorry, back, 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 back. Uh, you don't have uh, too many electives. Uh, those, the ones that you do have are usually for a little extra deeper dive for those who don't have any background in a particular area. A second semester, now some of these course names have changed. Uh, these are just um, general descriptions of what the courses, uh, the core courses are. Um, so, you know, the, just be aware of that. So second semester, then we start pulling things together. You start actually taking these basic skills and putting them together to form projects, uh, understand how real estate transactions occur, how investment decisions are made, uh, how real estate developments are envisioned and planned and delivered and so on. Uh, also in this semester, you continue your learning uh, with some electives. Some electives are going to be, you know, supplementing your development of an area that you didn't know much before. Others are going to be starting to provide you with deeper dives in areas that are particularly of interest to you. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, in, the in the third semester, as I say, this is where you pull all the things together. You do uh, your own individual capstone projects, which is a full development proposal of a property, not just a transaction, not just buying an existing building, but taking a site or taking an existing building and proposing a major development or redevelopment, uh, doing the uh, conceptual notion of how that building will be uh, in terms of physical form, functional use, and so on, uh, detailed financial analysis, for both financing the building and for the development process. Um, and then, you know, how to realize the profits at the end with a capitalization of, you know, of the future income. So the capstone project is, uh, as I said, you're, it's going to be an individual project selected from six or seven uh, choices that you were given in New York City. Uh, so therefore you'll be competing against other classmates also doing a similar project. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a very good professional uh, thing for you to undertake. And, and when you're out interviewing for jobs, having that capstone project as a, uh, a, deliver, a, a deliverable um, is, is very, very compelling uh, when, you know, when you're talking to someone about a job. Uh, you also are you know, continuing to build your knowledge of the capital markets and financing. Uh, you're also really uh, including a very important area today of the built environment that is affordable housing. Um, and then you have lots of electives, including a part-time internship, if you haven't had much prior work experience. So they're the major, um, that's the major breakdown of, of the various uh, semesters, um, the general points of overview. I'm just going to pause there and uh, I'd like to introduce the faculty that we have here. Um, so we have uh, Kate Asher, Professor Kate Asher. Hi there. Hi. Okay, we have Professor King, Cecily King. Good morning. Good, there she is. And uh, we have Professor Munsell, Christopher Munsell. Good morning, everyone. Okay, and uh, Professor Adam Lebinsky. Is he there? Oh no, we've we've he's off for the moment. But anyway, Professor Lebinsky. So we have their full time faculty. As I say, we have a number of uh, we have about sixty uh, adjunct faculty, uh, many of whom are our own alumni, but um, others who are just leaders of their various areas in real estate. Um, so any questions, folks, about, you know, these objectives, uh, these class, these uh, semester structures and so on? 
we've got a couple of things in in um, in the chat. Kiran, will this be oh, shown in spring? What do you mean in spring? I responded by oh, chat. Did you? I think I think we're good. Is there any way that we could have the faculty who are here just say a minute or two about the classes they teach and and their backgrounds to get a sense of that quickly? That'd be a great idea. Kate, would you like to? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so I'm Kate Asher. I have been teaching in the program for about a decade. Um, and I tend to teach classes that, as Professor Darrington mentioned, touch on um, planning and the process of development. So in the summer, I teach an urban planning class, which is an introduction to uh, it's called the political environment of development, but it's all the context for the development work that you'll be studying and doing. And it's meant to be an introduction both to cities in general and the context of development in New York in specific. So it really touches both of those. Um, and then in the fall, I teach a development analysis course that takes it one step further. Once you've learned the context, uh, we start looking at a specific site. Um, in a neighborhood of New York, and we walk you through the process of thinking about what the appropriate program might be for that site. And that has financial considerations, it has political considerations, community considerations, and a series of other things. So it's very much on the development side, um, but we also think about how you would put together the financing to make a project happen. So those are the core courses I teach. And then I teach a series of electives from year to year, some of them around transportation, this year I taught an ESG class, I teach a development history class, so the electives tend to vary a little bit um, year to year. And my background is both in public and private sectors. I worked for Vornado, a real estate investment trust. I also worked for uh, Mike Bloomberg when he was mayor for the Port Authority and in corporate finance. So uh, as Professor Darrington said, we come from, some of us come from both public and private sides. Is that okay, Jessica? Excellent, thank you, Kate. Um, Cecily, uh, you, you're currently teaching a course, uh, you and Kate are, uh, you know, tag teaming a very core, important course on development and pre-development. Yes. So my name is Cecily King. I am a real estate developer and consultant. I'm also an alum of the program. I have been a professor. I started out as adjunct faculty and now I'm full-time faculty with the program. I've been teaching with the program just under two years, um, because my focus it really is around development. Like Professor Darrington said, like Director Darrington said, um, one of the courses, the core course that you'll see me for as part of the program is centered around the development process. So how do you look at a site, understand the options for the highest and best use for it, the community considerations, layering that with the finance and, and really prepare an investment memo or development proposal um, using um, the tools that we get you learn throughout the course of the program. Um, it's It really does um, overlap with the work that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I try to tie that work into the electives. Um, like Professor Asher said, they can vary from um, year to year, but I really do center around real estate development development and community and economic development. So really real estate development as that tool for community and economic development. I work in a number of cities around the country. Um, Detroit is where I've spent a lot of my professional life. Um, and so I really do have a, a focus on how do you think about the tools for real estate and their impact on community. Um, so you'll see me for courses around affordable housing, equitable development. Um, you'll also see some development case studies um, and um, yeah, that, that's, that's really kind of the breadth of what I've, I've focused on as a professor with this program. Mm, with great amount of, uh, you know, experience and on the ground every day. Thank you, Cecily. Uh, and uh, Professor Chris Mansell is our finance professor. Thanks, Patrice. <clears throat> uh, like Cecily, uh, also an alum of the program uh, and started off as an, as an adjunct professor and, and now here full time. Uh, I've taught in the program since 2017, uh, seven separate courses in, in total, but um, uh, four is, is what you'll uh, most of you will have me for in the fall and spring semester. I teach uh, real estate finance too, which is the second core. Uh, real estate finance course uh, you'll take in the program along with underwriting. So you're working on uh, analyzing property financial statements um, and ultimately coming up with uh, with what they're worth and, and what you would uh, pay for them. That uh, leads into the uh, spring semester, which is your third and final semester. Teach real estate finance three, the core um, 
the third core real estate finance course. We'll talk about the capital markets as a whole um, with half the semester broken down on uh, the debt transactional side of the business, the second um, half of the semester on the equity side of the uh, transactional business. And then ultimately you'll come together uh, with a project on, on how you structure and raise uh, a debt and equity for a site that you'll select. I also teach an advanced placement um, course called Advanced Case Studies of Real Estate Analysis, which is really focused on uh, preparing students who want to go or at least want to understand more about the uh, private equity universe and the day-to-day -day responsibilities that, that they would encounter if they either worked in acquisitions in private equity or, or acquisitions for a developer. Uh, prior to Columbia, I bought just under uh, 15 years professional experience, both on the uh, debt and equity sides of the business, one for a middle market institutional investor and for uh, a series of lenders uh, before that. And I'm curr currently a, um, a principal at, at APRE, which is a real estate consulting um, based practice. Thank you. Excellent, Chris. Um, so uh, wonderful. Now, Jessica, will I get back to uh, maybe we continue on with the yeah, I, I would just say if anyone has any questions for those faculty, otherwise, I think if we continue on with the presentation and then move right to Rebecca, usually there's some career career questions. Right. Any questions um, for our professors and about that structure of the program, the sequence and so on? No? All good. All right. Okay, I'm just going to finish up with a few images of the types of activities we have. Uh, we obviously have a very good array of, of guest speakers. Um, we talk about community development and so on. Uh, we have um, case studies that the students undertake where they specifically look into projects that have been completed and analyze and critique them. Uh, we have various uh, significantly uh, industry leaders come in and, and speak. Uh, we now have our annual conference, which we hold at the Pierre Hotel. And uh, this is where we have speakers such as Jonathan Gray and other major leaders uh, will come and present and talk at that. That's where you're able to start mingling with, um, industry, with alumni, industry professionals, and so on. That is either in the late fall or the, or the spring. Uh, we have lunchbox lectures, We uh, usually one a week, if not more, and uh, we have here we have people that range from our own alumni through to other people out there in the various areas of real estate. Uh, we also have roundtables where which we um, create as more of a dialogue where you're able to talk about uh, various aspects with a speaker and hold an engaging uh, dialogue. We also have panels where we have a, a number of participants focus on a particular topic. Uh, and here we have, you know, the lending and the real estate cycle, which is always an important topic for real estate uh, people. Um, we also have, as I say, a, an important uh, uh, push to, to understand what's going on globally. Uh, our students come from those areas, from a variety of areas, and uh, we encourage them to speak about their countries and teach their classmates about what uh, what their class what's happening back uh, in their homes. Uh, but also, um, you know, we have study we have courses on cross border development, cross border financing, uh, international REITs, and so on. We also uh, go to lots of companies for presentations about their projects and about their development activities. Uh, we will do site tours of specific um, uh, developments, particularly in New York. Um, we you know, will go to even major developments such as uh, the rebuilding of Seven World Trade Center by Larry Silverstein here. We attend conferences. Uh, we have a variety of conferences uh, where, we, where our students are able to go and um, you know they're usually bonding things as well. Uh, in the spring, we usually have study trips. Uh, these can, these will either be Asia, South America, uh, Europe, and so on. Um, Brazil is often a destination, as are parts of China. Uh, here's Hong Kong. Um, we also are absolutely adamant that you use this opportunity to build your professional network. 
Uh, so we have you networking with your classmates, doing uh, forming clubs and activities, uh, plus with alumni. Uh, you're mentored with a you you were given you get to work with a, a mentor one on one throughout the program, and um, but you also meet lots of other alumni and are able to you know really make connections in the industry uh, before you even graduate. Uh, we have our mentor events where our mentors all come and meet with students. Uh, very important for us, as I say, is uh, supporting you in thinking about your career and how you're going to approach that. Uh, we do invite in a lot of interested uh, potential employers to come and speak about their companies uh, on a day in the spring when you're ready to be looking for jobs. Uh, and we get a wonderful attendance and, uh, you know, really great interaction with companies. Rebecca will speak more about how she posts um, the jobs that we are advised of uh, that would be available to you and so on. Uh, of course, lots of fun, uh, lots of enjoyment, lots of uh, relaxing and letting go of the tensions. Um, uh, but essentially do remember that we're here to form a community that is going to be visionary and creative about the future environment, built environment. Um, so thank you for that. I'm going to stop the share on that and we go back to uh, our Jessica, please. You're the commentator, yeah. Um, I just wanna thank all the faculty for being here. I know some of you have meetings afterwards, so if you have to jump off, um, thanks for being here. Uh, and next we'll move on to Rebecca anderson Palomita. Rebecca has a long, career in higher education administration, particularly around careers. The alumni know her, they love her, and we will turn it over to her. Hi, everyone. Um, I have been at GSEP now for well, almost be seven years, but I've been doing career development in the real estate arena for the last 10. Prior to Columbia, I was working at the NYU SHAC program, which I know some of you might be considering. Um, so if you have any questions about the differences between those programs, I'd be happy to answer those. Uh, my email is at the end of this presentation. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. And please, I hope that you can see it. Is everything okay? Can you can you view it? Yep, we can see that. Thanks. Um, it's not letting me enter full screen. Okay, so um, I guess, you know, I want to start off by saying your career development while you're here at Columbia, if you decide to come, is basically an extra personal course each semester. It's your own personal course each semester. So you don't obviously get any credit for it, but it's your own personal course. It takes time each semester. There's different things. I'll talk about a timeline, but it is my, um, it is my strategy to prepare, advise, guide, and present employment opportunities to you. Um, I offer individual career counseling sessions, which I take pretty seriously. Uh, I was talking about the open house yesterday in person that I pride myself in meeting with you individually. I pride myself in getting to know you, getting to know your personal careers, your backgrounds, where you'd like to go. Every, you know, Jessica was just putting in the chat where, to, you know, the backgrounds that people come from. We get a lot of different backgrounds. We get career changers. And I feel like I'm pretty, you know, affluent in talking about um, all those different areas. We have career development sessions, like Professor Darrington mentioned, we have a spring career fair, the career focused lectures, the mentorship program where you get paired with an alumni. We also have a spring internship program where you have the ability to partake in a part time internship in that last semester that you actually get credit for. And then we have our own jo job board called G GSAP Gateway, which is essentially like the LinkedIn for GSAP. So it is something that is internal that just focuses on employment for all the programs that are within GSAP. Uh, you can connect with alumni within that. There's um, resources, there's events through there. So it's kind of like our own little, little portal for you all. These are some of the things that you'll be learn learning during the year. Obviously, professional etiquette, you know, this is this program is an equivalent to an MBA, so everything's very professional. Resume and cover letter writing, your job search and how to search for opportunities in real estate, leveraging your LinkedIn and social media, industry relationships, salary, interviewing, and proper presentation and interview skills. This is just a quick snapshot. Like I said, if you have any more specific questions, feel free to email me. These are just some of the titles that um, students will receive after the program. 
whether it's roles in finance, whether it's roles in development, because we have uh, students who have different um, years of experience, so there's different roles involved. This is just a snapshot of the positions in the areas for the class of 21. I won't have the class of 2022 out until six months after graduation, um, but I will say that uh, I mentioned yesterday in the, the in-person that there's more hybrid roles that are coming out and the hybrid roles touch finance and development. Um, so it's a, it's a combination of both, but if you decide to come to the program, um, we'll talk about how close you wanna work to the asset that you're interested in and so on. But you can see here the class of 2021, Professor Darrington has really made, and Professor Munsell has really made the curriculum so finance heavy and it's so important. And we have a lot of students who are interested in that, but I will tell you, we have plenty of students who go into the development side as well. We have a lot from family business. Uh, I will tell you this, this last class, the class of 2022, there's more entrepreneurship. So like I guess we have, this is just a bulk of where the students go. And then this is just an example of some of the firms that have hired from us in the last couple of years. Uh, I will say, typically we're at 65 to 70% of the students will have a uh, job by the time of graduation. There's about 10, it ranges, but a 10 to 15% of students, we have no idea where they go. They go back home to their family businesses or to their countries. And then typically I'm working with 10 to 15%, um, you know, within three months of graduation, but our rate of hiring has been almost 90% within six months of graduation, which we're very thankful for. Um, one of the things I just want to mention quickly, I'm just going to put here in case you want to email me, is as far as the timeline goes, um, you know, Professor Daring was talking about how each semester, the courses and the rigor, the first semester is typically you're focusing on your coursework, you are focusing on networking with your classmates and getting to know everybody that's in the program because that's going to be huge for you um, after the program's over is building those friendships and then researching areas of real estate that you're learning in the classroom. So you're kind of compiling things together. The second semester is really where you start to prepare yourself on paper. You wanna narrow, we're gonna narrow down your areas and trajectory in the fall. You can really begin networking in the fall um, and preparing in for and applying for full-time roles in the spring. Um, and then the third semester is more networking, finding roles and actually applying, participating in the spring internship program, um, the career fair, and then obviously the, the annual conference. But as Professor Darrington mentioned, there's plenty of ways to network and um, really learn from so many different people, alumni, industry. But if anybody has any questions, feel free to email me. And I guess that's it, Jessica, unless anybody has any other questions.